demonstration of deadlock T SQL Server. I have two sessions. The first session is SQL Query 1. When I query from table T1, I see one row with the value A. In the second session, I query table T2, I see one row with the value B. Now, a deadlock is going to occur between these two sessions when they try to lock each other's rows, that is, each other's resources in the database. So the first session begins its transaction and updates T1. That goes through successfully. The second session updates this independent table T2, and that also goes through successfully. Now, since these are transactions, the first session in SQL query one has a lock on the row in T1, and the second session in SQL query two has a lock on the row in T2. So I come back to the first session and try to update T2. Now this update waits because there's a lock on that resource held by the second session. I'm demonstrating two sessions from the same SQL Server Management Studio, but you could assume that these two sessions are coming from two different clients or two different application servers, two different users. For simplicity, I'm using the same SQL Server Management Studio, but these are two independent sessions. So the first session in SQL Query 1 has updated T1 and now waiting for lock on T2. The second session in SQL Query 2 has updated T2 and now it will attempt to update T1. So this is where a deadlock will occur because session 1 is holding the lock on T1, session 2 is holding the lock on T2, session 1 is now waiting on session 2 for the lock on T2. So when session 2 tries to update T1, it will wait for that lock held by T session 1. So now they will wait for each other. Session 2 is waiting for table 1, session 1 is waiting for table 2. And that wait will go on forever until it is automatically resolved by SQL Server because it is a deadlock. So when I try to execute it, it, after a while I get a message. So it takes a few seconds for SQL Server to identify that a deadlock has occurred. It returns an error message. Now either of the two sessions could be the victim. It just identifies any one of the two as the victim and says your transaction was deadlocked on resource with another process and has been chosen as the deadlock victim. So SQL query two session is the deadlock victim and it recommends that this user rerun the transaction. Let me just issue commits here. Now a deadlock has already occurred and this transaction has already been terminated so there's no point in issuing commit. So I just demonstrated that to you. SQL query 2 is the one with the deadlock and because the transaction is terminated, there's no commit here. So once the deadlock has occurred, how do you identify that as the DBA? You go into management, extended events, sessions, and by default system health is already enabled. You look at the event file. Now it's going to take some time for the deadlock to be returned into the event file. So I'm going to just pause here for a while. And then I will come back. Okay, now you can see there's a deadlock report it got. It took some time for the deadlock report to be written, but you can see the deadlock report, report has been written as of 2306. So I select this. You can order all the events by name or by timestamp. So if you know approximately when the deadlock occurred, you could look for that by, by timestamp. Or you know you're looking for a deadlock, you can order by the name called like XML deadlock report. So this is the deadlock that has occurred. I can see the deadlock in a diagrammatic manner. A deadlock is between sessions of server process 57 and 54, and it is on objects T1 and T2. Okay, so you can see here 57 was a trying to update T1. So 57 was trying to update T1. You can see that that was the request, but it already had a lock on T2. So that's where the deadlock occurred. 57 was the one terminated. Let me just show you again here. 57 is my SQL query 2. Process ID 57, and it shows 57 is the one that was terminated. 57 held a lock on T2. You can I can go back here and see yes, this 
P2 update was successful. By the, the diagram shows that the request on P1 is where it got terminated on the deadlock. So 57 corresponds to this SQL query 2. And deadlock occurred when you try to update P1. So that's in a diagrammatic manner here. You can also go to details and look at the events in an XML report format. So it'll show you that there were two uh, two sessions. The first is uh, one shown is the victim process ID. You can see the process ID. You can see the details of the process. If I just scroll to the right, I can see the transaction timestamp, batch timestamp, batch start, batch end. What was the client? SQL Server Management Studio. I, I'm demonstrating this from SQL Server Management Studio. So both the sessions are in the same client and the same host. But you could have had this deadlock between two different clients, two different programs, two different hosts, two different PIDs. But here, for demonstration purposes, I'm using this SQL Server Management Studio, the same host, the same host PID. But you know that these are two different processes on the instance side, 54 and 57. That's what the XML report format shows you. And it shows that the this is the one that got terminated. The, the, the victim got terminated when I was trying to update P1. And the other session had, had, a, had been in update of P2. So the deadlock is written to the event file. It might take some time, so you might have to look for the deadlock after a few minutes. You can go to management, extended events, system health, event file. Search for XML deadlock report or search by timestamp. The deadlock is shown as a diagram here or is shown as an XML file here. And the XML file you can copy into copy paste into Word or any other uh, documentation utility that you're using. It'll identify you the, the timestamps, the client and the host and the host PID. And on the instance side, it tells you what is the process ID. And which were the statements where the deadlock occurred. Now, these are very simple statements here, just one line statements. In a real application, your SQL statement could be 10 lines, 20 lines. It could be a, it could be part of a procedure call, whatever. So there'll be much more details, but for simplicity, you can see it's very easily identifiable here in this case. 